Hello, my name is Angela with Freedom Mobile Living, and uh, today I want to talk a little bit about what I have going on. Uh, what I did on the social media platforms like uh, Facebook, uh, some of the groups that are on there dealing with rideshare, also some groups on uh, Twitter, and then also uh, Instagram. So I've been trying to get feedback for people who have been driving for Uber or Lyft for you know, at least two years. And some people have been driving six months. and But uh, there's a lot of people have been driving over three years. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a feel, not only how the industry is, but also to find out exactly what the drivers think about what they're doing right now. So we all know the complaints a lot of drivers have with Uber and Lyft. And I've always been at the, I guess I'm at the crossroads where I say, you can't argue with corporate or you can't argue with companies or, or they're pure what they're trying to do is just gain profit they're not really a company trying to do a service or really care about who they're doing service for as far as the writers or the drivers so i'm getting a lot of feedback and one of the things i wanted to do is i wanted to know how to open up the platform in florida uh, the reason being is because I want to find out what the drivers are feeling. What would get them to go, to move over to another platform where they get 100% of the fares and then get all, you know, the reimbursement of the tolls if they have to go through tolls. But they get 100% of the fares and tips, which in my uh, research of me doing it since 2019, what I do find out is that what they're really interested in is more pay. So with Ride Local platform, you can literally drive a quarter of the amount of time that you drive now and achieve the same type of uh, revenue. The difference is that Ride Local isn't gonna take a percentage out. What we do is we make our money off booking fees and booking fees happen on every ride. If you even look at Uber or Lyft, when they first start the ride, they charge booking fees. And that handles the app as far as future development, as far as uh, managing it, and some of the marketing uh, cost. At first, I was going to have a subscription fee, but then I thought to myself, well, if I was a driver and I had subscription fee, and I didn't have any riders, it would be not worth it for me to do it because of the cost of the, the subscription fee. So... I guess a subscription fee would work if you had a bunch of riders and you turned on the app and you started getting jobs, then it would work. But if you have to build it, just from all the feedback from a lot of drivers, I'm getting, they don't mind subscription fee as long as the return is, starts to happen immediately. So what I've been thinking is to release it, not have any subscription fees, no cost for uh, doing background checks. Ride Local will do all that, will handle all that without any cost to the drivers. The whole thing is to get drivers on, have them build their platform. And since Ride Local uses the platform, when you get a ride, we pair you up with that rider. So we want to keep riders with drivers, and that way it increases the safety uh, of the platform. But in the same token, it also increases the revenue for the driver where they can count on the certain rider. And riders can go from being a rider and get taking a ride uh, with a ride local. They can start taking a ride. That's one thing. And they also the shopping and also uh, the food delivery. So any delivery or any errands you need run that uh, ride local will go ahead and do. Uh, now we pair it up with the drivers so the drivers can build their platform uh, not only with riders, but also with shopping and also with uh, errands and uh, food deliveries. Now, what if you have a, ride, a driver that doesn't want to do that? Then we don't pair them with that. So if there's a request and they don't want it, they can decline it. They don't have to take it. Uh, one thing about Lyft and Uber, they penalize you if you decline rides or you cancel rides. They p penalize you for it. And the reason being is because really there's not a great incentive. 
So they know that. They know the, the amount of money that they're paying out is what a quarter of a percent, 40 percent of the total fare. And I've done some calculations and it fluctuates based on the ride and based on, uh, I don't know what type of uh, criteria Lyft or Uber is using, but I noticed it goes from anywhere to 40 to 60 percent. There have literally been rides and uh, the fare itself, the rider, uh, was you know a lot more double of what I was getting as a driver, so that that presents a big problem. Reason being is because drivers have costs; they have the cost of the vehicle, they got the maintenance, and their time. So there's three elements that they have that cost them. So what we try to do is eliminate that by increasing it, the fares by get, giving them that hundred percent. Now, how do we determine what the fares are? That's determined based on the market of Uber and Lyft. And uh, we just try to do that based on Uber and Lyft. And then we can always uh, change that as time goes on. If we get inputs from the riders uh, and the drivers, uh, mainly the drivers will give input based on what they believe that they should get for fares. Now, it can't be just hypothetically. You got to back it up with uh, competition, the market, and uh, so on. So a lot of times what we do is make it affordable for the rider so the rider can go ahead and take the ride. Why? Because it's cheaper. There's two things a rider really cares about. Cost, right? The cost of a ride and reliability. And in case there are some cases where a rider will pay more money in order to achieve reliability. Uh, they want to know when they request a ride on a particular time and date or if they have an on-demand request they want to know that they're going to get a, a driver immediately uh, and that's why time is an essence an element since the pandemic and a lot of things changed in the ride share platform a lot of your uh, a lot of your time and elements, uh, even Uber and Lyft have had wait and save and they, they stretch out the time from the time that the rider requests a ride to the time the driver picks them up. What we want to do is we want to uh, shorten that, but we also want, as a just imagine as a driver, if you were a driver on a ride local platform, all you'd have to do is build the platform to what you wanted. So let's say you didn't like to work on Sundays or particular days. Well, really, a lot of times when you drive, if you're consistent on your driving, and, and I'll give you an example, if you drive every morning, then your ride to work, your airport rides and those. What I have done is sometimes I don't like to do airport rides, so I'll go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll put my app on later in the day, and that way I'm not getting these airport rides. I don't mind them, but I also like to look at the other market for some drivers, because I, I, hypothetically I want to see, hey, what if a driver didn't want to do airport rides? Because there are some that do not because of the length of time it takes them. Once they do the airport ride, they go away for an hour or two hours. Now, what do they do? They got to drive all the way back at their, under, uh, on their dime. And really, I can understand them not liking that. But I, the platform that we're building is different. So let's say you had to go to an airport ride an hour away. We will team you up with riders within that city not only on a destination filter if you want to come back immediately or you can stay there and drive and offset your cost there's a lot of things we want to do to do that but really what i want you to do is i'd like you to comment below and tell me how we should open it should there be subscription fees initially or not or how should what type of riders are we looking at what would we like to do as far as the platform goes so if you can comment below and tell me what what your thoughts that you have, should there be a subscription fee or should there not? Now, don't base your decision on because I don't want to pay money. I mean, if I had to pay, let's say, example, $99 a month opposed not to. So I'm going to just say I don't want to pay money. Yeah, so it's all about what you want. So if you want to comment below and let me know if a subscription or no, no subscription fee is important. Uh, another thing I've thought about is if a right or driver got five drivers, then we grandfather them in and uh, not have them ever, ever have a subscription fee if that's something we might do down the road. 
So give me a comment, give me a thumbs up on the video if you liked it. But I'm really trying to get feedback from uh, rideshare drivers uh, for Uber or Lyft or if you're driving for another platform. But right now I'm finished the coding for both apps. The Ride Local app, the customer app uh, is completed. And the, the driver app uh, for the Ride Local platform, I just finished coding and I sent it over to Apple and Google to be approved. So what they'll do is test it, make sure there's no crashes, no bugs in it, and then they'll go ahead and release it once they uh, finish their testing. Um, I would suspect within a day or two, I'm gonna have it completed. And uh, also another thing is about having a launch. So in order to launch it, I would like to probably have a live broadcast, uh, but if I can get a bunch of drivers sign up on the Ride Local, and then you'll go to www.ridelocalflorida.com. If you can go on in and hit the driver tab and go ahead and fill out the information. And once you do that, there's no cost to you whatsoever. So I've already decided that. The subscription fee might come into play down the road after the platform's been built. But it won't be for the ones that have built the platform, helped build the platform. I will grandfather them in where they'll never ever have subscription fees. So if you want to, if you're interested in driving or just interested in knowing more information, go ahead and go on to the ridelocalflorida.com uh, website and there's information on there. Go ahead and go to the driver tab. Uh, right now I have it set up where the rides are done on the website. That's going to change once I release the app, the app because then everything will be due based on the app. Uh, QR codes are another thing. And another thing to think about is what type of uh, promotion would you run initially? Uh, but I am really seriously thinking about having a live broadcast on YouTube. And that way uh, I'll launch it from the broadcast and that way we can, people can t tune in and then ask questions or whatever they want to do. But I'd like to have an onboarding session. So anybody who wants who is interested in driving or just possibly interested in driving, go ahead and sign up. Now, let's say you don't live in a city that we're going to open up at. Right now, we're going to open up down in Bradenton, Florida. Uh, and then we'll probably hit other cities as time goes on. I do have some drivers who are interested in Tallahassee and Cape Coral. So... We'll just uh, play it by ear initially. Now, other cities throughout the United States, it doesn't take a lot for me to open it, but I'm probably going to require at least a minimum of five drivers so we have some coverage uh, for the riders. So if you're interested, if you're, if you're in, let's say, if you're in any other city, uh, you could be at Clearwater or you could be over in Arizona or in, in Michigan, uh, Detroit area, wherever you are, comment tell me where you are look on the website ridelocalflorida.com and when you do that go ahead and sign up on the driver tab and then we can start getting the ball rolling if you have questions we'll fill you in and we'll go ahead and answer those questions as they come to us and i will definitely be putting out some more videos so anyhow if you like this video give me a thumbs up that just helps the video and lets people know that people are at least viewing it the other thing, if uh, you if you're really interested in building this and becoming a separate platform in the rideshare game, go ahead and subscribe because I'm going to lurch on any video that comes up. You'll be the first to know, so go ahead and hit the subscribe button, and then I will go ahead and uh, get back with you on that. But seriously, folks, uh, if you're interested in changing the game, you're interested in making more money, 100% of your fares and tips, and you're interested in building a platform where the drivers are going to have the voice on how it's built, how it's structured, and how we uh, roll it out within this, their city. So if you're new in a city, if you're in, let's say, Vegas or something, and you're there and you say, okay, I want to open up in that area, then you can help spearhead that and there won't be no cost to you whatsoever to do that. Initial drivers until the platform gets open and our cities are full, then we'll go into the subscription fee. But prior to that, uh, no subscription fee for anybody. And if you get in early, like now, 
then you will be grandfathered in. You'll never have a subscription fee. Just remember, background checks, everything's paid for by Ride Local. Uh, we're here to open up the platform. I think it's the right timing is good. I think people are tired and sick and tired of Lyft and Uber. I think they want reliability and they want lower fares. And so let's put something together so we can give it to them what they want. And we all will be seeing each other at the top. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. I know it's uh, you have to take time out of your schedule in order to do that. And I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again. Remember to subscribe, and then I will see you at my next video. Have a blessed day, and may the Lord watch over you. Thank you.